Today we're going to be playing some Super Mario 64 using LEGO Mario as a controller. That's right, after using a whole bunch of other controllers, we're finally using Mario to play Mario. Yeah, for real. So for everyone that bought any of the new LEGO Mario sets, it turns out that LEGO Mario, Luigi, and now Peach are actually a bit more high-tech than you might have thought. Now you probably already know about the camera on the bottom that can scan things like the tiles and such, but under the hood, these toys also have a gyroscope and accelerometer. With these, Yam and Kauf wrote up a Python script that actually is able to not only read this data from LEGO Mario, but also use it for a variety of uses like making your own soundboard, or here of course, actually using LEGO Mario as a viable controller. And by viable, I mean it's incredibly scuffed. It's LEGO Mario, what did you expect? Anyways, yeah, in this video I wanted to try and play some Super Mario 64 with LEGO Mario here and try to get at least one star from each level. So go throw some LEGO bricks at that like button, let's get to it. So to start, we actually need the pipe here from the LEGO Mario set as we need to scan the little tile inside of it as here it's programmed to act as the start button. So then, after hopping into this pipe in real life and then struggling to even select a save file, let's go over how LEGO Mario's controls work in this game. So for starters, to move Mario in the game, I simply have to tilt LEGO Mario in the direction I want to go. I think the best way to think of this is to imagine Mario facing forward as a control stick and then he'll move whichever way I tilt him. Then, as you might expect, for the A button to jump, I have to make LEGO Mario jump in real life, to punch, I have to thrust Mario forward, and then to crouch, I have to shake Mario downward. You can also combine some movement, like thrusting up and then down, to do a ground pound and stuff like that. Anyways, after that quick tutorial, let's head on into the castle and enter our first stage here, bob -omb Battlefield. Now usually when doing challenges like this, the first star I like to get is the one locked up behind the Chain Chomp here. And oh boy, this wasn't a good one to start with as it went way worse than I thought it would. I'm just gonna put this out there, pretty much any sort of platforming that requires even a tiny bit of precision is absolutely brutal with LEGO Mario here, and landing onto this little post is way easier said than done. And landing on it is half the battle, as we also have to ground pound it not once, not twice, but three times. Basically, I had to rely on luck here as doing a ground pound on the post without jumping off of it or getting hit by the chain chomp was really tough. But after like 15 minutes of attempts, I got a few lucky ground pounds in there to release Chompy Boy here to break open the cage for our first star. After how difficult that first star was, yeah, I wasn't really feeling confident about the rest of the run here. And although my main goal is to only get one star from each stage, I still wanted to get at least a few more from Babom Battlefield here, so let's hop back in. So next up, let's try fighting King Bobom here, and getting up there can give us some nice practice with Mario's movement. Crossing the tilting bridge was kinda scary since dropping down would cost me a whole bunch of time, but thankfully I was able to make it across. Where the Chain Chomp forced me to practice jumping and ground pounding, King bob here will finally let us throw some punches by thrusting forward. Thankfully, getting around the big lug here isn't all too bad, it's just getting in a good position to then punch to grab him was sometimes a bit tricky. But after awkwardly getting a few throws off, that's a boss down and another star to our collection. Next, seeing how simple the run was up the mountain, let's see if we can win a race against Koopa the Quick. Thankfully, being one of the first stars you get in this game, it's pretty generous with the amount of time it gives you to beat the Koopa here, so I was able to run up the mountain and make it to the flag here with a bunch of time to spare. Now next, I wanted to give sliding a whirl, so let's hop into the window here to get to Peach's secret slide. Honestly, sliding controls pretty dang well with LEGO Mario here. So well in fact, that I was almost able to do the slide speedrun skip here on my first try. And after a few more tries, I was able to bonk and dive my way to skip most of the slides to finish it in under 21 seconds to get the bonus star. Then, after doing the slide again, fully this time, after almost 30 minutes of playing, we're only at star number 5. Now next up, let's hit up Womp's Fortress and first see if we can climb up to the top. I honestly didn't think double jumps were gonna be viable with LEGO Mario, but thankfully after trying a few, I was able to do one to climb up to this ledge to save some time. And then after carefully walking past the piranha here, across these blocks, this narrow plank, as well as this rotating bridge, things were actually looking pretty dang good. 
Then after getting onto these elevators and up to the top to square up against King Womp, I soon remembered how difficult the ground pounding was with the Chain Chomp earlier, and immediately I thought things were gonna go south here. Thankfully enough though, after falling down, King Womp is a much bigger target than the post was before, so although it was still pretty janky to actually do a ground pound, when I was able to do one and clip through the king as he was falling down, the hits came pretty easily. And after three hits, king goes boom, and we have yet another star. Now next up, let's do the star on the side of the fortress here. I haven't really done any side flips or wall kicks up until this point, so let's see if we can pull those off here to do the speedrun strat to get this star. The side flips are actually pretty tough to do, as if you don't flip LEGO Mario in just the right way, Mario will actually default to a jump dive instead, and that certainly isn't what we want here. It was also really tricky to get close enough to the wall after side flipping, let alone actually doing the required wall kick after that. After a whole bunch of attempts, I was honestly getting ready to give up on this strat and just get this star another way until this happened. I just feel like it's doable, you know? Uh, I, just, I haven't even got, I think I've gotten one wall kick out of all these attempts. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Haters will say it's fake, but I legitimately don't know how that happened. Yeah, honestly, I have no idea how that happened. The stars must have aligned or something. After this, I was feeling pretty good and all warmed up, which is good, because next up we got quite the challenge as we have to climb up to the top of the fortress tower. Like I said at the start, pretty much anything that even remotely requires precision would be tough, and it may not look like it since these platforms are kinda big, but as far as controlling LEGO Mario goes, yeah, this is still considered pretty precise here. Now, jumping up the first static one isn't all too bad, but once the moving ones get added to the mix, oh boy. Since the time was now limited on these platforms, you can't exactly take your time to move to get an optimal angle to jump at, and that coupled with the jankiness of actually getting a jump off made in the first place, this task was pretty difficult. But several minutes and numerous save state reloads later, I was finally able to get up to the top to grab the star. Next, I thought I'd try to grab onto Hoot the Owl here to fly up to the star in the cage, but unfortunately, just based on how LEGO Mario controls here, it's impossible to hold the A button down as it's only pressed when jumping up, and as such, we can only hold onto Hoot for like less than a second. That's okay though, I guess we'll just have to get the cage star owlless another way, but first let's hop into the cannon here to get the star stuck in the wall, as there is no way I'll be able to get this star cannonless. Thankfully, aiming the cannon was pretty easy with LEGO Mario, so after breaking the wall and doing some careful walking, star number 9 is in the books. And then similarly, I tried to use the cannon to shoot into the cage, and although it took a bit of trial and a lot of error, I thought it was gonna barely miss this one attempt, but nope, I somehow managed to just slip in and grab the star. Now with 10 stars in hand, back in the castle the light is shining down in the foyer here, but unfortunately since there's no way to press C up to look up at the light, at least not in this build of the coding for LEGO Mario, we unfortunately can't access that stage, and as such, I guess that means no flying cap for this video. So on that note, let's move on to the next stage, Cool Cool Mountain. Thankfully, just like with Peach's slide, the slide here in the cabin went just as easy, at least going solo. Next, I thought bringing the penguin down to her mama would be tough, but thankfully by using the speedrun strat, I was surprisingly able to bring her down first try. Grabbing all 8 red coins wasn't too bad, but I was going for some style points here so I wanted to jump across this gap to get to the resulting star faster, which was pretty tricky. I had many failed attempts, but then once out of the blue, I just kinda landed near the star. Certainly wasn't how I intended, but hey, you know, not gonna complain about that one. And last up for this stage, let's try the slide again, but this time against Pingu Chungus here. For the most part, the race isn't all too bad, except near the end where there's this one turn that discount Pingu here just kept like pushing me off of. This star was kind of annoying, and with the added stress of racing against someone else, it took a bit of luck, but it's definitely doable. Alright, so we haven't done any swimming up until this point yet, so next let's try that out as we backflip here into the secret aquarium. It was certainly awkward swimming here by shaking Mario around, and it took a bit of patience to make sure I was jumping straight up to swim instead of moving even slightly forward, which resulted in a useless water punch. Certainly wasn't anywhere near fast, but after getting all 8 red coins, that's yet another star down. Keeping with the theme of swimming, now on to Jolly Roger Bay to grab a star there. 
I wasn't about to try and do all the platforming inside the sunken ship, so it's off to the cave we go. Here we can just waltz over to these chests here and open them in the right order open them in the right order to grab the resulting star. So on that note, next up we hop into the courtyard to get into Big Boo's haunt. Here, seeing as how the side flip wall kick star in Womp's Fortress was possible, I wanted to give a go at doing the speedrun trick to grab the star up here. It was pretty tricky, as should be expected by this point, but after a while, I was able to do a side flip and then wall kick up to this platform before then jumping across the gap to reach the star. Then next up, I went around on a ghost hunt to knock out five boos before then bamboozling the big boo for yet another star. Then after dropping down to the basement area of the mansion, we basically do the same thing yet again, but this time on the merry-go-round, which made pulling off the ground pounds a bit more difficult, but nothing I couldn't manage at this point. And now, with 19 stars and the first 5 levels cleared for this run anyway, it's time to finally run up and open this star door to head on down to the first Bowser stage. Thankfully, getting through this stage wasn't all too bad, it just required a bit of precision when making some jumps across platforms, as well as when running along this tiny ledge to avoid having to deal with the seesaw platforms. And after a few more jumps, it's time for the first face-off against Bowser here. Now honestly, I was kind of worried to see if I would even be able to spin Bowser around after grabbing his tail, but to my surprise, it worked. It worked very well actually, like way better than I thought it would. Anyways, after lining up a throw, bada bing bada boom, Bowser 1 is down, and we get our first key that we can use to head on down into the basement, and it only took us an hour and 48 minutes. Being our first time down here of the run, we of course have to catch the Waskily Wabbit here, and this wasn't very easy. It was really challenging to get close enough to Mips here, let alone actually punch to grab him. It took way longer than I would have liked, but after a while, I was able to dive and catch the fella for star number 20. Now on to Lethal Lava Land, I wasn't really looking forward to this one, as getting around this stage takes a decent amount of platforming. Well, at least more than I'd like to deal with using LEGO Mario. I could still use the lava to damage boost my way around, but only sparingly, as obviously it costs life points. Thankfully though, the red coin star was easy, but after getting into this middle area, the next challenge was to jump across here to get to the big bully. This was pretty tough, and I took way too many deaths to the lava, but with a long jump just late enough, I was just barely able to make it to the platform. I was actually able to defeat the bully pretty easily, but I got a bit too cocky and actually walked off the stage and died soon after. Oops. But the next time I defeated him, I was much more careful, but now we have to deal with these falling blocks to get up to the resulting star. One wrong move here, and Mario can say bye-bye to another life. Thankfully, it was around this point that I discovered that by doing like a stabbing motion when trying to move forward, I was able to do a longer jump much more consistently. So after a few LEGO Mario stabs, oh boy, that's another one down. To wrap up this level, I wanted to get at least one star in the volcano, so after hopping down, I used a damage boost to get up onto this elevator, and then jumped onto this pole. Now getting up here wasn't too bad, but the problem lies with these tiny platforms we have to jump across to reach the star. Yeah, these weren't a good time. It took a long while, but thankfully the stars aligned again, and I somehow managed to make it onto the star. Then next, after unfortunately getting a game over, it's time to hop into the land of the shifting sand. I think it would be an absolute nightmare to try and open up the pyramid at the top or to climb up from the bottom, so here I just wanted to get the star from Klepto instead. Luckily, I was able to grab the box at a good angle first try to hop across the hill here to then walk up to this pillar. Timing the jump kick to hit Klepto took a few tries, but bam, that's yet another star down. Then, after getting a freebie star from Toad Boy here, let's hop on down into Hazy Mazy Cave. To my surprise, I was actually able to pull off some long jumps to get across here, and as such, I was able to get to this elevator to then use it to do the speedrun trick to clip down right into the area below to easily get that star. And then, since the other wall kick stars worked out more or less well so far, I wanted to try and get the one behind the rolling rocks. The side flips and wall kicks were as tricky as they were before, but I guess I've gotten the hang of them now as I was able to pull off the star faster than the others. At this point, playing for nearly two and a half hours already, I really wanted to just commit to getting one star per stage, but unfortunately, we need 30 stars to open up the next star door, so I needed to get three more stars here. 
For these, first I went back into the actual maze in Hazy Maze Cave to find the exit leading to this star, and then I decided to go back into the volcano to get the second star there. I went back thinking it was going to be easier than the other one, but I forgot about this section here. Yeah, this was probably the most difficult platforming section of the run so far, as it took several more precise jumps, and just the smallest mistake would lead basically to an instant death. It was pretty rough, let's just say that. And then after getting that star, for the third I needed, I wanted to go back to Shifting Sandland to try and get the star on the side of the pyramid. At first, I thought I'd have to walk around the pyramid as normally intended, but then I had the big brain idea of setting myself on fire instead. And this actually worked pretty well, and although it took a bit of timing and an optimized angle, after a few tries I was able to perfectly burn up and grab the star with ease. And now, with 30 stars in our possession, we can go on up to open this star door to now access Dire Dire Docks. Swimming was just as clunky as ever here, so I had about zero motivation to grab any other stars here, but I guess at least we need to grab the one on Bowser's sub to progress through the game. Thankfully enough, the blocks on a timer here are pretty generous with how long they appear for, so I was able to really take my time to make sure all of my jumps were okay. And after boarding the ship, we can grab the star and then unlock the second Bowser stage, Bowser in the Fire Sea. In my first few attempts on this stage, I really thought it was going to be a doozy, and it was. Well, at least the first section, since I had to deal with this moving platform. As you probably notice now, pretty much anything moving is just bad for this challenge. But after clearing the first area, the higher ones weren't all too bad, I guess I was just starting to get kind of good at controlling with LEGO Mario at this point. Now at Bowser 2, things really weren't much more difficult than the first fight. In fact, my throws were actually too powerful for a while, so I had to really try and slow things down to get the kaboom I needed to beat Bowser again to get the second key we need. With this key, after just under 3 hours we can finally gain access to the second floor, where here we can first jump into Wet Dry World. Now I know I said I only wanted to get one star per stage from here on out, but the shocking aerolift star was just way too easy with the warp here, and I wanted at least some challenge for this stage. As such, I thought it would be a good idea to grab the star up at the top of the level, and honestly, getting up wasn't all too bad. I even made some long jumps that I didn't think I'd be able to. The trickiest part was crossing this plank super carefully to not fall, and then having to deal with the fireballs at the end of it. Definitely didn't go well the first time I made it across the plank, but after another try, that's another one down. Now onto Tiny Huge Island. I let my chat decide the next star, and they picked plucking the piranha plant, so that's just what I did. Most of them were relatively easy, it was just the two that are near the ledge that made me sweat a little bit. I was just super worried that I'd accidentally walk off and fall, which would have been a disaster, but thankfully no disasters this time as that's star number 34 in the bag. Next we hit up Tall Tall Mountain, and what better star to try and get here but the one for climbing all the way up to the top. At first, I tried to take the normal path up, but uh, yeah, it didn't go so well, so I instead decided to take the shortcut back behind the starting area that zips us up a decent amount. From here, there were quite a few tricky jumps along the way to the top, jumping across this gap, jumping off the log here, and then finally having to make this crazy long jump across here, which I was honestly blessed to have been able to do on my first try. And then from there, it's only a hop, skip, and jump to yet another star. Now onto Snowman's Land, here I ended up going for two pretty easy stars again. Firstly, I went and defeated the Chill Bully here, which was basically as difficult as the other bully was earlier, and then to practice my backflipping, I went into the Ice Sculpture thing here to fall into the second star. Now normally, I'd need another 12 stars to open up the next star door here, but being over 3 hours into this run, I really didn't want to try and scrape by and take a few more hours to get those, so I did the unthinkable thing and loaded up another save file with 70 stars. Sue me. So next I wanted to try out TikTok Clock, and I had some high hopes for this stage, but these were almost immediately crushed after trying to jump onto the first set of platforms. Yeah, if I was already struggling with this, things aren't looking good. This stage was certainly the most difficult one so far, especially since a small error could result in an immediate death. So I decided to take the easy road and just get the first star here. 
And I say easy road loosely, as this still felt like a feat of strength, as just getting up there was incredibly difficult. And now for the final level, we got Rainbow Ride, and before even jumping in, I was already struggling to even jump up to the area. If that's not a sign of things to come, I don't know what is. Anyways, after the struggle of just getting inside the stage, I was debating which star I wanted to get here, but ended up taking my chances with going down into the lower area here. The start of this area wasn't all too bad, but here is probably the most difficult section I had of my run. Basically, I had to time the tilting platform, jump onto these falling platforms here, and then jump up to the next area quickly before the platforms fell too far. This section was not only brutal, but also soul-crushing as I just kept falling over and over again, as despite my intended commands, Mario would end up just like jump-kicking or side-flip diving towards me for some reason. It was pretty bizarre and incredibly frustrating. Of course, you probably have seen how janky using LEGO Mario is by this point, but I'm not sure if I can truly portray just how frustrating this really was. After about 20 minutes of pain though, I was somehow able to make my way up, and although this slope also gave me some trouble, it was peanuts compared to the last bit. So after overcoming that, I was incredibly happy to grab the last star I wanted. So with that, I've now satisfied my goal of getting at least one star in every stage, but we're not quite done yet as we still have to try and defeat Bowser in the final fight. And yeah, sorry guys, there's absolutely no way I was going to be able to do a BLJ up these stairs here without altering the code to allow for like a rapid fire A-press toggle or something. Anyways, once in the stage, getting up wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Highlights of struggle include jumping off these platforms to get up here, as well as dealing with these timed stairs. I honestly didn't think I'd have enough time to jump up all of these stairs before they flatten back down, but by like shaking Lego Mario, I somehow managed to pull it off. The last tricky part here was with this horizontally moving platform, as I had to make sure that my jumps over the blocks on the way were perfect. If I messed up a jump or waited too long, yeah, I'd be pretty bamboozled. But after that, it was basically smooth sailing from here on out to the pipe here, which takes us to the final boss fight with Bowser. And here, I don't think there's much to be said that I haven't already. The first two throws were surprisingly good, like I got them off faster than I sometimes do, even in a speedrun. The final throw was the most difficult though, as since there isn't a programmed way to move the camera with LEGO Mario, I basically just had to take my chances and throw Bowser towards my best guess where a bomb was. So I ended up just throwing Bowser a little to get him closer to one of the bombs, and this actually worked wonders as after a few more throws, that is the last kaboom that we need as Bowser is finally down for the count. Now this certainly wasn't the most janky controls I've ever had to deal with for controlling Mario in this game, but on the other hand I didn't actually go and collect 70 stars this time, so I'm sure there's much more pain to this challenge to be had if someone else wants to attempt it. For me though, 4 plus hours of this pain was certainly more than enough. But regardless, I think it's absolutely incredible that playing this game with LEGO Mario was even possible in the first place, let alone being able to grab as many stars as I did, and even being able to beat Bowser. And yeah, if you'd like to learn more about using LEGO Mario for stuff like this, or want to try this challenge out for yourself, I'll leave a link to Yaman's video down in the description below. And if you want to see all four painful hours of me going through this challenge, it won't be up the day I upload this video, but I'll eventually also have it linked down below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to check out some of my other challenges and subscribe to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you in a bit.